Hi everyone, and welcome to the Insistex webinar. This is our second, well, it's actually third webinar uh, we've done over the past couple of months. And uh, today we're going to be talking about rodent control and all things rodents. Um, so thank you for joining us. I uh, hope you have a good evening. We will only be going for a short time. This is not going to go forever. But I want to introduce you and pass you over to our area manager for uh, Queensland South, and that is Warren Tomich. So take it away, Warren. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Andrew. Um, and thanks for everyone for joining us tonight. Um, tonight, we're going to be discussing the challenges we have with rodenticides in the field, and also the more safer and humane products that we have in our product range, be the gorilla traps, as well as the Nora blocks and uh, lures. Okay, so with the PVMA um, has placed a review of second generation anticoagulant rodenticides as a priority two regarding the killing of native wildlife. So risk to non-target animals, risk to humans, pets and wildlife, around 1400 human exposure incidents annually, labeling issue to stop use in crops and also the use of liquid formulations. So just in January 2016 found unharmful traces of Kuma tetral and warfarin at three farms. So Kuma tetral is not registered for the use in the USA and several EU countries. In 2018, the European uh, Union reduced the amount of active in first generation and second generation rodenticides from 50 parts per million to 30 parts per million. Traditionally, anticoagulants were used at 0.05 grams a kg. They've now reduced it to 0.03 grams a kg for consumer use. So this is significantly less effective. Um, rodents need to eat more bait, takes longer to eat more, um, takes longer to kill them, sorry, and also the resistance. So therefore the classification means the end for the use of first generation rodenticides by consumers. You need to know your enemy, so make sure not to target non-species. Okay, as pest professional managers, we have key issues when we face when controlling rodents, when using rodenticides. Firstly, toxicity to, prior, to primary and secondary targets, and also resistance, rodents building up the resistance with the products. Thirdly, we need to be mindful of the RSPCA and PETA which is People of the Ethical Treatment of Animals, which is the largest animal rights organization, currently have about 9 million members who are watching the effects um, that rodenticides have on our wildlife. The RSPCA view is that by using rodenticides in the field to control rodents is actually classed as inhumane. The RSPCA see rodents as sentient animals capable of suffering pain, fear, and distress. All rodenticides are toxic. So just, uh, just a bit of a um, slide of the actives we have with regards to your second generation anticoagulants, as well as your first generations. Regardless of which rodenticide group you are using, we need to remember that they are all toxic. So therefore, placement is critical. Placement of rodenticides and the use of lockable stations is very important. We need to not target those non-target um, species. Where possible, the removal of carcasses will reduce the risk of secondary poisoning of non-target species. So always try and collect the carcasses. In my experience of being out in the field, whenever I did rodent jobs, in seven days, I always ask clients to just have a bit of a walk around the yard and look for these carcasses, and then just dispose of them in a bag and into the bins, or I did on my follow-up. With this in mind, we need to change our mindset. Rodent management needs to be an integrated system, more than just baiting or trapping. You can achieve this by altering the environment. These photos show the habitat management. Photos to the left will show the attraction to rodents and photos to the right will show habitat management and no more rodent problems. So very important to remove debris, litter, keep grass areas tidy, maintain, um, areas around the buildings. So just in the photo on the left, you can just see an overgrown area and then cleaned up nicely on the right-hand side. 
just makes it harder for, for rodents to infest these sort of areas. Also keeping fence lines nice and clear, very important for rodent management. When inspecting areas with pipes and wires are positioned, this is a great area to use our adenosyl gel. These are areas where they need to, uh, sorry, where they are, where they are commonly found to ingress buildings. Um, and this is where we can use our product um, rodenithyl gel. Great entry points. With our rodenithyl gel, it's a 300 gram uh, corking tube. It can be used with a corking gun. Um, this technology allows us to blend various vegetable fats and proteins enriched with cereals and sugars with specially derived lurin aromatics to create a soft, creamy bait which retains high qualities of long-term stability, attraction, moisture retention, and very high palatability. Just on this product, with some of my experiences I've had, um, we, had a, we had a problem site. It was actually a biscuit factory, um, a lot of bait shyness, a lot of alternative food source. Um, we went out and put um, some 30 gram blobs in our lockables, and within days we were, we were able to get the rodent in there and feeding. So a great example of where, where it can be used. Because of that high moisture retention, it serves as a food as well as well as a as a moisture um, a drink. Another another great example is a is a horse stable. We had an issue with rodents in a horse stable. Very expensive horses. The client was concerned about rodents pulling blocks out and horses coming in contact with the rodenticides. Um, because of the high adhesion with our rodenithyl gel, we managed to place these in the roof trusses away from non-target species, and we got them feeding feeding on the bait. So great product to use in these sort of situations. It's always helped myself and my clients um, get out of those sticky problems with starts and, and a lot of alternative food sources. Okay, thirdly, another very important part of rodent management is, is good housekeeping. So always keep areas neat and tidy. You can also use pallets to your advantage. So you can convert pallets to shelters, these great areas of rodent activity. Um, you can use a, the pallets to install gorilla traps as part of your catch zones. So by controlling the environment, we create huge stress for rodents. So rats die through stress being placed upon them. So no attraction equals no rodents. Lights and odors from holes and gaps will also attract rats. So remember to proof these areas, very important. It needs to be part of that integrated system we always talk about. Proofing buildings against ingress. So don't forget to proof the wire and pipe work too, okay? These are used as rut runs to get into the areas. It's very important to make sure that these are proofed as part of that integrated system. Also very important to remove vegetation from other items that can provide bridging to the structures. Get these all cleared, not only from a rodent aspect, but as we know in our training, termites and, and other general pests. It's always really good to get that uh, vegetation removed from those external walls of structures. Okay, so part of the integrated rodent management, we have three, three parts to that. The first is monitor, monitor the site. If there's any activity we can look at, at rodenticides or traps, we get, we get the rodent infestation sorted. Um, you can then look at working with the homeowner or the business owner to clean the environment, to make it inhabitable for them. And then thirdly, you can look at those excluding, exclusion zones. So closing up holes and gaps for re-entry. Some of the problems we face with the traditional rodenticides is a decreased palatability over time. We know that generally, depending on the environment, that most rodenticides will sort of be effective or palatable up to four weeks. After that, they should be changed and also the attack by stored products, pests, and also snail and slugs. We have a great pro a product called Slug and Snail Killer that you can use, use in this situation. Okay, and so this, this, this then now brings us to Anara Blocks and Range, a non-toxic monitoring. In an idealized rodent management program, we should be minimizing the use of toxic baits. Only after the determination of rodent activity should rodenticides be used. Thus, NARA blocks should be our product of choice for rodent maintenance programs. 
Nara blocks are the first allergen-free non-toxic rodent monitors. Allergen management has become a major topic in many food production companies. It's used to monitor for rodent activity and determine the rodent species present. If you look to the right of the screen, you can actually see bite marks on those blocks. This will help you determine what species you're dealing with. Bigger bite marks for, for rats and your smaller bite marks for, uh, for mice. The problem with food-based monitor blocks is they have a critical disadvantage as they serve as a food for rodents, helping them to survive and increase the risk of rising reproduction. Okay. With the NARA, unlike food-based monitor blocks, does not serve as a food source, no mold formation in those damp areas, no insect infestations, and they stay act attractive up to 12 months. We also have a range of flavors um, depending on the situation you have on site. Just a video of, of the palatability of the blocks. just gives us an idea of the attractiveness of, of the product out in the field. We also have the NARA spray. So the NARA spray is a new in innovation. So it's based on the well-tested hunting practice where hunters used to drag a dead rat to a trap to catch foxes. The NARA spray is used to lay a trail to lure rodents into bait stations. The spray will also mask plastic trap odors of the lockables. Just bear in mind not to spray too much on them. I have had issues where, where rodents have actually eaten holes into those lockables because of that attractant. Okay, so in this slide, we have a picture of the gorilla rodent traps with the Nara lures, and this will complete our current range. The gorilla traps are the world's toughest and most humane traps um, and are used with the allergen-free and long-lasting Nara lures for rats and mice. The Nara lure blocks they are allergen free and mold resistant and highly attractive to rats and mice. So rats use their vibracia to build up a 3D model of their surroundings and whatever's in front of them, especially. The vibracia is actually the hard hairs they have on their nose and their mouth parts. And this is used essentially as an organ, a touch organ for them. So it's very important that your stations or your traps are placed correctly. Picture of our, our rat um, gorilla trap. Um, they're the strongest traps. They're the most humane traps. They're certified humane. They have the strongest springs. Um, these traps will fit most rodent stations and the Nara lures are designed to fit into the gorilla traps. Just a picture of our back-to-back -back mouse traps. Uh, I'll be showing you a video in the next slide of it in active, sorry, of it in action. Game over. Like a horror movie. <laughs> okay, so with our gorilla traps and the Nara lures, they're actually certified humane. It's been independently tested. It's approved by the German, Swedish, and other governments. It exceeds the welfare category A of the Australian Code of Practice. At least 80% of trapped animals have a TIU not exceeding 30 seconds, and that at least 90% have a TIU not, ex not exceeding 180 seconds. So TIU stands for time to irreversible unconsciousness. The gorilla traps are 19 seconds. It's only traps that are certified humane. And then lastly, um, I'll just explain our Rodenthor Digital. This is a new product to our Rodenthor range. Um, it's a gateway that connects to, to sensors. These sensors are placed in lockable stations to detect movement um, or vibration. The benefits of this um, system is the early warning and quick treatments, um, avoid risks of infestations, 
reduce the use of rodenticides. So only when they go active, can you then implement your rodenticides, um, speed up root cause analysis, dramatically reduce labor costs. So you only need to go out on site <coughs> when it alerts you and they go active. Um, the ability to monitor difficult to reach and high security areas, less business disruption, no sensitive sites. It also creates your documentation, intelligent reporting, data analysis, and improved audit readiness. Thanks guys, that brings us to the end of my presentation. Do we have any questions? Well, thank you, Warren, uh, for taking the time to step us through that presentation on rodent management. Um, for anyone who has any questions or um, would like more information about what Warren has presented this evening, please feel free to contact Insistex or your local area manager. We'd be happy to answer any and all questions that you have. Um, some of these products many of you have seen before, um, but we are always updating and improving our range. So please feel free to give us a call. And we look forward to seeing you all next week at Pesticon. Thanks for now and goodbye.